Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about density. Density is a pretty important scientific idea. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to explain how you can calculate density, and you should be able to explain how you can uh, use density to distinguish between different materials. Now, before we get started, I'd like to tell you a little history that comes with the idea of density, and it has to do with this guy right here. This guy is who we call Archimedes. Now, Archimedes is a Greek mathematician who was living a long time ago, and the story goes that Archimedes worked for a king. He was employed by a king, and this king was really suspicious about buying gold or getting gold from a goldsmith who was making his crown. So Archimedes determined, or he discovered, that this idea of density could be used in order to figure out what materials were. So one day when Archimedes was taking a bath, he got into his bathtub and he noticed the bath water run over the sides of his bathtub. And this is why, two reasons, this is why this man is running naked and this is why he's got water all around him. It says that he jumped out of his bathtub yelling Eureka because he had discovered a way to tell the king that he could determine what his crowns were being made from. So a little bit of history before we get into this topic. Now, density is a lot easier to understand if you can picture what's going on inside of an object. So if we could view two objects, if we could look at the actual particle structure of an object, it would be a lot easier, but we can't really do that. So when we're looking at these objects, we need to figure out a way to measure the density. Mathematically speaking, density equals the mass of an object divided by its volume. So if we take the mass of an object and we divide it by its volume, we can find out the density. So let's say we're trying to figure out of these two items which one, uh, what the different densities are of these items. The first thing we need to do is figure out the mass. And mass is fairly simple. A lot of you have probably done this before. If you take something like a scale, we can take an object and we can put it onto the scale. And with that object on the scale, we can determine that it has a volume of, let's say, uh, 20 grams, okay? So mass, we said, is measured in grams in this case. The next thing we need to do is figure out the volume of this object. If this is a cube that we're looking at, if we're able to measure it, volume you hopefully have done before, uh, but just a quick refresher. To find the volume of this object, we want to take its length. Let's make this easy. Let's say this is four centimeters. It's width, uh, this line here, let's say this is also four centimeters because it's a cube, and then its height is four centimeters. So to find the volume, we can take length times width times height. And for this cube here, we would take four centimeters times four centimeters times four centimeters. This gives us a grand total of 64 centimeters cubed. The cubing comes because we take a centimeter times a centimeter times a centimeter. So it's three centimeters, which we call centimeters cubed. Now, to find out the density of that cube, we say that density equals the mass of the object, which is 20 grams divided by its volume of 64 cubic centimeters. And that's gonna equal, so if we punch this into our calculator quickly, we're going to get 20 grams divided by 64 cubic centimeters to give us a total of 0.3125. Okay, so in here we have point three, one, two, five. Now the units on density is pretty easy as well. If you know that you're taking a mass divided by a volume, your units have to be a mass divided by a volume. So in this case, 3.3125 grams per centimeter cubed. That's our density of this object. Now the final thing we can do 
is to figure out the density of an object that isn't in a regular shape or an easily measurable shape. So I'm going to take you to a website to show you another way that this can be done. This is a real basic website. It's got a few objects here, and let's say we want to find the different densities of these objects. Well, what do we need to do? We need to find their mass, and we need to find their volume. Since we are working on the computer here, we aren't easily going to be able to measure the volume of these objects, plus some of them are not a regular shape. These cubes would be easy to measure, but some of these ovals and triangles and things wouldn't be very easy to measure. If we were to find the mass of an object, we have our scale here, we could put something onto our scale, and we could find the, volume, the mass of the object, 65 grams. But we can't measure this, so there's an easy concept called displacement. If we use this graduated cylinder here, we could have a displacement of this object, and we could measure the, the volume of this object. So if we put it into our graduated cylinder, we can find out that this object has a volume of 40 milliliters. And we have that kind of reddish looking oval, right? So if we take that reddish looking oval and we want to find the density of that oval, we said it has a mass of 65 grams and its volume was 40 milliliters. In case you didn't know, a milliliter is equal to one cubic centimeters, so that's real easy for us. Now, if we go back to our trusty calculator and we take our mass of 65 grams, divide it by our volume of 40 milliliters, it's going to give us a density of 1.625. So our density is 1.625. And again, putting the proper units on that, we need to take a mass divided by a volume. So the density of this object is 1.625. Now the final thing I'd like to talk about is what does that indicate to you? And let me give you one quick fact. The density of water, so water's density equals 1.0 grams per milliliter. Now if something has a density higher than water, it should sink in water. And if something has a density lower than water, it should float in water. So let's go back to our simulator quickly. And if we take our object here, if we take this oval and we put it in water, if it has a density of 1.6, it should sink in the pail of water. And if something is lighter, so if we can find an object that has a mass, which is less than its volume, we should be able to assume that it floats in water. So let's test out these objects quickly and just see if we can find one that would float in the water. So a mass of 42, a volume of 61. That should give us something lower than one. And ideally, if we take this object, we should assume if we drop it in the bucket, it should float in the bucket. So a quick summary on density. Hopefully you guys were able to take something away from this. If you wanna to go to the website, it's easy to find, explorescience.com. And I hope you learned something brand new today. 